we can't do anything about it except pray and trust the Lord. Amen. And uh, we've got uh, the majority of our folks are not here today. Uh, Miss Betty, our organist, and Miss Ruth, our pianist, Miss Baker today is filling in for her. And uh, we're going to have special singing for you. The choir's not singing. We don't have folks in the choir. Everybody will come up and get in the choir, make it look like we've got a big choir. But uh, anyway, uh, Jared's got his brother here. Which one's this? Nathan. I hadn't seen Nathan since he's about eight years old, so I don't know. And uh, he's a good-looking young man. How about that? He was a good-looking little boy, too. And uh, the last, the last I heard of Nathan's name hollered was when his daddy was hollering, come on down the mountain, Nathan! <laughs> but anyway, it's good to have he and his family here today. All right. Well, uh, aren't you glad you're able to come? We're going to pray. We're going to stand uh, and we're going to sing, I'm Standing on the Solid Rock, number 20 in your songbook. And uh, so we will pray, then we'll have our first song. Lord Jesus, thank you now for this good day that you've given us. And we pray that you'll bless this service this morning, dear God. And we'll pray, Lord, that you'll uh, uh, bless those who are, Lord, watching by live stream. And you'll meet their needs, dear God. And Lord, in these trying times, we look to you and no one else because you're, you're our help in the time of trouble. So God, this morning, reach down from heaven to your spirit and touch this service. In thy name I pray, amen and amen. Amen. Let's all stand and sing number 20 in your songbook. All right, let's sing out like we mean it this morning. Through my disappointment, strife, and discontentment, I cast my every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. I'm standing. Stand eternal to page 32. Page number 32. What sins are you talking about?
praise the Lord for that. All right, I didn't think about it, but uh, uh, Nathan, introduce your wife to us. All right, it's good to have both of you, all, all of you here today. Amen. What a blessing that is. All right, well, we've got several announcements to make, so listen very carefully. And most of these are in the bulletin, but some are not. I just want to go over them with you very carefully, okay? Brother Brian, our music director, choir director, he's home. He's got severe sinus problems. He's, has it, he's already had a couple of bouts of this, so if you've had any sinus uh, infection, you know how bad it is. And so uh, he's not hardly able to get out of bed today just with that sinus situation, okay? Uh, Miss Ann Hubbard is uh, uh, in the nursing home here in Walterboro, no longer in the hospital. And Brother Priester, who was in the nursing home, is still there. He'll be uh, coming, going home on Thursday. So that's a, that's a good blessing there. And uh, now, uh, camp meeting, we've had to cancel our camp meeting for this year. And I know that that's heartbreaking to me and those of us. Uh, various reasons have caused that. Uh, one, we, the motel is now, motels are uh, only can take so many people in. Matter of fact, we had the entire Best Western booked up and the other two motels were waiting, but they, they can't do that. And then we found out we couldn't get what food we needed for the camp meeting. When you have five or 600 people here for camp meeting, you gotta have a lot of food. And we couldn't get that, so we went ahead and had to cancel that for this year. Now, if, uh, if you uh, have already given toward the camp meeting, your camp meeting, and you want your money back, We'll be glad to return that to you, or we can just let it sit right there and use it for next year. So if you want that back, you just need to write your name on a piece of paper and give it to me or our church treasurer, and we'll get that to you as soon as possible. We want to do that for you, okay? Uh, also, uh, uh, this morning, instead of passing the offering plates, we're going to let you later in the service come up and just put your offering in, and uh, so we'll do it that way, Okay. Also, we have a gift I want to give to you. That's Dylan run off, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 copies. Uh, it's a, uh, we, we gave this away about, I don't know, eight or nine years ago at camp meeting. And I think there's one glitch on us. It's a, just a CD of some great, great singing. And uh, I hope you'll enjoy that. So you be sure to get you a copy. Now, one per family. Uh, and if you'll take it home, listen to it, use it in your car. Yeah, I've been, I listen to it all the time. So we want to give that to you also. And, uh, but anyway, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to share with you. Uh, but uh, I think that's everything right now. Uh, want to make sure, want to make sure. Okay. All right, now another thing. These are some things I'd like for you to do, okay? And those who are listening on live stream, I know you'll need to do this in your church also. A lot of churches are not having church today. Some are having, like we're having right now, just a morning service and we'll not have an evening service. Now, I will be down here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock to bring a message. Uh, uh, Brother Dylan will be here to broadcast it. And, and so if you'd like to come just sit, you can. And we're not going to have any singing, uh, just me bringing a message. Uh, so if you want to come, you're welcome to. Uh, but if you uh, want to stay home, let's do a live stream. You can do that also, okay? But first of all, things that you can do, okay? I'd like for you this week to take the time to call other members. Now, you don't do it all. Just take your, we got a church directory back there and say Monday, call three or four, Tuesday, call three or four. In other words, go through that, calling each member and just saying, how you doing? Anything I can do for you, especially those in our church who are up in years and uh, check on them. Ask me, can you do anything for them? Secondly, which is the very most important thing, I'd like for you to uh, call each member's name out in prayer this week. Amen. Uh, if you want to do it every day, that's the best thing you could do. It won't take you long to do it, but if you don't want to do it, break it down. And this week, uh, when the week is over, you ought to have prayed for each church member at least once or twice or three times this week. You see, the greatest thing you could ever do for anybody is pray for them. Now, I don't, I, I'm not an alarmist. I don't live in fear. I don't believe in that. Now, there have been some fear, there's been some fearful times in my life. There really have. There's been things that really put, put fear in me. But I'm glad that didn't stay there. You see, you can't let fear take root in your life. It may come, but don't let it stay, okay? Let it be a visitor. And so, now, we have some out today who, who uh, they're playing, they're being careful, they're being cautious. I don't think they're fearful, and I don't think we'll look at them that way. Amen? Amen? 
Okay. And so, uh, but we need to pray one for another. We do have some folks who in our church who are highly contagious. Our immune system is weak and they could be easy to get this thing, not just here, but anywhere else. And so I have prayed this morning. I got here about two hours early. I went through this building praying that God would protect everybody who's who are able to come today and watch over them. And we've, uh, the folks who clean have tried to sanitize everything. Amen. And so anyway, please, uh, we're not going to have a handshaking time this morning. Uh, I hope you'll just, you know, if somebody gives you the hand, say, hey, we're not supposed to handshake today. Preacher said no. Would you ever believe in a Baptist church? We'd say, don't, hand, don't shake hands. Uh, matter of fact, uh, Jared said it was, a, it was a Baptist doctrine we're breaking. <laughs> it's almost that way, amen. But anyway, he said, the preacher, we can't say hands. What we're supposed to do? I said, the Bible says, uh, uh, greet each other with a holy kiss. He said, we ain't doing that either. And, uh, but anyway, all right, so pray for each other. Would you do that? Would you really do that? And, uh, and then uh, be sure when your offering comes, and these are for folks out there, uh, don't neglect getting your offering into the church, okay? And there, there are, I don't know how many is watching us today. Just because you're not able, not able to come to church doesn't mean that you, that you don't do, take, take your tithes and offers and use them for your own benefit. So get those in, and I know God will bless you for that. All right? And, uh, but anyway, I'm glad you're here. A lot of churches doing some things. Some churches are joining together. Some churches are, uh, they're, they've got it set up to where they can, they're driving up in the parking lot and put their windows down, and, and they're preaching from the porch and all that. But uh, I'm glad we're able to be in here. Aren't you glad you're able to come? Amen, amen. All right, we're going to have another good song. And then I believe Brother Tommy and Mark and uh, uh, Brother Tommy, <laughs> Brother Tommy and Brother Curtis and them are going to come and sing a couple of songs for us. Amen. Come on, Chris, have another good song. Chris, you look good in that blue dog. Amen. All right, we'll turn over to page number 42 and sing Saved by the Blood. Saved by the blood of a crucified one. Brother Mark, if y'all make your way on up here and uh, get ready to sing. And uh, I called him Mark. He's not Mark. And Mark, Mark, Mark's not as handsome as Tommy. Mark's his brother-in-law. Amen. All right, while they're coming, Brother Jim Meyer, won't you stand and give us a little testimony? Go ahead and just tell us, tell us something good about the Lord. Amen. Grandmother. How about that? Amen. And living up north. I tell you what, now he's, now he's a full-fledged southerner. Amen. 
He's even picking up some of our words. Y'all. Y'all. He ain't the only one. <laughs> okay, that's right. Here. Got another Yankee up here. All right, sing a couple of songs. There you go. I'm thankful for the Lord that 47 years ago, I transferred from the north yeah. to come south yeah. to hear the word of God. Yeah. Never heard the word. Well, I can't say never heard the word, but never was told about Jesus yes. being the Savior of the world yeah. for our sins until I came south. Yeah. And God is blessed in that. What he's done in my life, I'm thankful for him for what he's done. But we're not through. we still got a journey to go. That's right. Even though things are looking, I can't say bleak. No. Uh, we were looking at Matthew 24 yesterday, and, and I said, you know, of all those verses of Scripture, it says when you see pestilences and all these things, he said in verse 6, but the end is not yet to come. That's right. So we're still here for a purpose. Yeah. We're still here to tell others about That's Jesus right. Christ. Amen, amen. for this song. Talk about praying. Yeah. Even though we sing this song a lot, I, I, it, it has a lot of meaning. But, you know, we didn't have Sunday school this morning. And for you to come to Sunday school, what did you do this morning while Sunday school would have been going That's on? That's a good question. And I prayed. I don't know about anybody else, but you know, I teach a Sunday school class, so I prayed for those kids in those Sunday school there you class. Go. Hey, I hey. prayed for Denny, Miss Sherry, yeah. Mr. Brian, other Sunday school teachers. <clears throat> Why? Because that was time that God gave us, even though we weren't here, that we could pray yeah. one for another and That's we could right. build that wall of prayer. That's good. <clears throat> Yeah. 
I know it's just repetitious, but I'm telling you, the greatest, the greatest, greatest, greatest thing you could ever do for one another is pray one for another. I mean, really, I'm not talking about just passing, but really praying. Even for those that, that you may not be really close to in the family of God, you still need to pray for them. You see, you see prayer connects you, and I'm going to say more about this in my message this morning, but prayer puts you in connection with him. It unifies you with him. But prayer also unifies you with each other. When you, when you call somebody's name out in prayer, they might not even be aware of it. Amen? Just like uh, Jim said about his grandmother. When I got saved, uh, the day after I got saved that week, I went to see my grandmother and my grandparents. And when I walked in and I said, Granny, guess what happened? Guess what happened to me? She said, you got saved. I said, yes, I did. She said, oh, boy, God answered my prayer. I've been praying for years. She said, I'm praying for all my grandkids to be saved. So she, when she could just tell. And so uh, you need a wall of prayer around you. Amen. Pray one for another. It'll unite you. It'll strengthen you. It'll connect you with heaven. It'll connect you with the family down here. So would you do that? Now, I mentioned about a gift we've got for you. You got that ready to go, Dylan? And we're going to, I'm going to play a song off this CD I'm going to give you when you leave today. And if, we, if, we, if you don't have enough, just stick around. It won't take but just a few minutes to get you a copy of it. And so while this song is being played, I'd like for you uh, to bring your offering and just put it in the offering plates. And, and if you uh, want to get somebody else to bring it for you, that's okay. Uh, if you didn't come to give this, maybe you're going to give tonight or later, or uh, you give once a month, whatever. Just We're going to receive the offering, and so you just come while the song's being played. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pray and ask God to bless the offering, and then we want you to hear this song. I think there's 19 songs on this CD I'm going to give you, and I'm telling you, every one of them is super duper. Okay, let's pray and ask God to bless the offering. Father in heaven, we thank you now for this time we can receive the offering, and Lord, I realize that, uh, Lord, uh, you offered yourself that we could be saved, and you commanded us to give that tithes and offerings back to you. So, Lord, we're just, we're just obeying you, but we do it joyfully, gladly, heartedly unto thee. So, bless it in Christ's name, I pray. Amen. All right, play it, Dylan. Listen very carefully. Just go ahead and bring the offering up. I've sailed through troubled waters on the stormy sea of life. I've seen some gloomy days, walked through some dark old nights, but walking close beside me is a friend who'll never leave. Through troubles and trials, I can still wear a smile, cause I know he's watching over me. And my Lord's big enough to fight my battles, big enough to calm my fears, big enough to solve my problems. Big enough to dry my tears He's big enough to pick me up When I stumble and fall And when I come to the banks Of the chilly Jordan River He'll be big enough to carry me across Oft times it seems each step I take will surely be my last and I've been in raging waters where I was sinking fast but of all the trials from where I started till I reach my heavenly home I haven't ever and I know I'll never have to go it all alone cause my Lord's big enough to fight my battles big enough to calm my fears big enough to solve my problems big enough to dry my tears he's big enough to pick me up when i stumble and fall and when i come to the banks of the chilly jordan river he'll be big enough to carry me across amen amen i tell you what that's that CD has got so many good songs on it. You had, if you ride down the road, you've got to be careful. You, you'll be beating on the steering wheel. You'll be, you'll be shouting and praising God. If there's any shout in you, you will, eh? Aren't you glad you got a God big enough? That song talks about, about a big God. 
uh, and there's no match. We're going to sing one more good song, and then we'll have some preaching. Chris, come on, let's sing the first and last verse of a good song. Let's stand and, and sing a couple of verses of this song. Come on, Chris, what number? Page 43. 43. Nothing but the blood. Amen. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. On last, this is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen, amen. You can be seated. All right. Well, it's been a good morning thus far, hasn't it? And, uh, I am just blessed beyond measure that you've been able to be here. I do want to emphasize, though, that I hope you will be cautious and careful. These are not; these are dangerous times in the world, and but just because they're dangerous times doesn't mean that we are to just to uh, isolate ourselves in fear. And uh, now this morning, I want to preach on this thought: S O S. Everybody know what that means? S O S. Okay. All right. Well, it's a, it's a distress signal. I did some little, just a little bit of research on this, and it was used back in, it was first used back in 1909 by ships in danger at sea. Uh, it was first used by Morse code, and, and it's still used today by those who need a rescue for themselves. People use it today in a time of emergency. SOS and uh, it has it has been used all ever since then throughout the 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 years uh, as a time of distress and can I say to you we are living in a time of distress amen but think about it. even though we're living in a time of distress you and I ought not to be distressed amen we ought not uh, be afraid of the day in which we live. Now, by no means am I saying that you should not take this virus serious. It is a serious virus. And uh, I, I'm going to say more about that uh, on our broadcast on Wednesday night, but I'll not do that this morning, about this particular virus. And, uh, but if you take your Bible and turn to the book of 2 Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 7, to a very, very familiar passage of Scripture. I do know that just maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, uh, within the last year I, I preached, maybe even the last six months, I preached from this particular verse in the Bible, but I use it in a different way that I'm going to use it this morning. But in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14, let's go ahead and read verse 13 too, all right? Uh, it says, If I shut up heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. So that verse talks about a distressing time, a time of pestilence. And so this virus is a type of pestilence. So God says, here's what, here's what you are to do when these things come. He said, if my people, now just underline that statement or highlight that, if my people. So let me say to you right now that the key to the answer to this virus is the people of God. I'm saying it's the people of God. We, we must, we must do what God says. We are his people. He said, which are called by my name. Now, if you're called a Christian, if you're called a child of God, even though this was written to the nation of Israel, it still applies to us today. He said, he said, if my people which are called by my name, and I call this, I call this the four R's. 
uh, the four R's. He said, if they'll humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, there's a prescription right there that God has given us if we'll do that as a people, amen? I'm not talking about just us here at Welch Creek, but if we'll do that as a nation of God's people, it'd be amazing what God would do. What would he do, Brother Baker? He'd do what he just said he'd do. He would forgive us and he'd heal our land. So the answer is not in the uh, uh, campuses of our college. They don't know who God is. The answer is not in the White House or the State House or the School House. The answer is in the church house. Amen. Amen. So he says to the four R's, I call this, number one, he said, humble themselves. And this word humble here means more than we can really describe with words. It means a reliance. That's the first R. Humility is when you come to a point in your life that you know uh, you cannot fix what's going on, that you humble yourself and you rely not upon yourself, you don't rely upon other people. You don't rely upon the doctors and the nurses and, and your employer, but you rely upon the Lord. We, in other words, uh, humbleness means that you recognize your weakness. I'm telling you, uh, we are weak in ourselves. Oh, it's just a, you see, America... Is a, I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to live in the USA. I, I'm pr- but I'm telling you what, pride has just about ruined this nation. Pride has just about ruined our churches and God's people. We've sat back so long and we're so dependent upon scientists and doctors and technology and all that. And I thank God for that. But that's not what we're to rely on. We're to rely upon the Lord in these days which we live in. So reliance. In other words, dependence or trust in. So being, in other words, having a humble spirit it doesn't matter what you have, how much you have, or how little you have. Uh, you can have, you can, uh, uh, in other words, uh, David was a rich king. Solomon was a rich king. There's a lot of rich people who are still have a humble spirit. I've met some wealthy people in my life, and many of them are heady and high-minded and know they're wealthy. I've met other people who are wealthy who have a humble spirit about them. Oh, wow, Russell Anderson, you've heard of Howes Anderson College. Russell Anderson is a millionaire. But if you met this man, you would not know that he was a millionaire. He has a humble spirit about him, a reliance upon God. And, and so uh, one of the signs of the last days is the church of Laodicea. That's the last church mentioned there in the book of Revelation chapter 3. And it talks about that, how they're increased with goods and they're rich and have need of nothing. Is that not the day in which we live? So he said, if my people will humble themselves, that's a reliance and our help must come from above. Our help is not in what people can do. First Peter 5, 6, listen to what Peter said. He said, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, under the mighty hand of God, and uh, that he may exalt you in due time. And so if we'd humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, he would exalt us. You see, if you want to be, if you want to be somebody in life, if you want to amount for anything, if you want to go somewhere in life, humble yourself and God will exalt you. A church who will stay humble, A church who may have everything still has a humble spirit. God will bless that church and raise it up. So our nation right now is in desperate need of some humility. I appreciate our president. I realize that that, uh, he's not everything he should be. I realize that and who he is. Amen. But I really believe that our president wants God's help. I really believe that he wants, he, he, he wants churches to pray for him. Pray for the president. Pray for the governor. But, uh, but realize, uh, I like what Micah said in Micah 6, 8. He said, what doth the Lord require of thee? And here's what he said. But to do justly, in other words, be just in how you live, and to love mercy, love mercy. What is mercy? <laughs> mercy is not, uh, it's not uh, getting what you receive. Love, mercy. In other words, don't, don't you look at people and say, boy, they deserve what they're getting. 
No, you love mercy, and you love it by you being merciful yourself. But notice what he says, but to love mercy and to walk humbly, humbly with thy God. So uh, Peter says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And Micah says, walk humbly with thy God. So day by day and throughout each day, walk humbly uh, with the Lord by your side, his hand upon you, and God will bless you and God will help you. Oh, my soul. Hey, the answer is not in a vaccine, even though that will be wonderful. But the answer is us humbling ourselves before God. So that's the first R. Then he says, after he says, humble yourselves, he said, pray. And here's the second R. It's called reaching. Reaching. That's what prayer is. Prayer is reaching up to heaven by faith. Prayer is looking above, looking up. Taking your petitions to a God who knows what you need is reaching up to our God. Set your affections on things above and not on things down here. And that's what's wrong. The average saved person has set their affection on things down here. Not just the world. They don't care. They don't know. But God's people should not set your affection, should not be attached to the things that are here, but your affection ought to be on things above. He said, Let your, lay up treasures in heaven, not worry about treasures down here. Prayer is reaching up. To God, Pray, listen to this statement. Prayer is our petition to him. Prayer is the vehicle that carries our request to our God. Prayer is you uh, going or looking up and believing. And matter of fact, when you don't even know what to pray, whenever you become what you might say distressed or worrisome and, and I have and, and, and needing some help, and Lord, I don't know what to say, I don't know what to pray, that's when the Holy Spirit will pray for you. Oh, my soul, what a wonderful companion the Holy Spirit is. As a matter of fact, God knows our, knows our needs before we ask, but he still, he still commands us to pray. Now, why is it so important to pray? Well, you, you want God to hear you. But listen to this very carefully. Uh, prayer, listen, prayer produces our fellowship with him. Prayer connects us with him. <coughs> Prayer is that vehicle. It produces our fellowship with him. <coughs> That's why each day you should begin with prayer. Each day you should uh, uh, get out of your bed, wash your face, comb your hair, uh, Wake up, and after you wake up, and then you get up, spend some time in prayer. And then throughout the day, uh, as Paul said, pray, pray always, pray without ceasing. And what he's meaning there is this, that throughout your day, be in a prayerful spirit. Maybe somebody in your family that, that is sick or needful, you pray for them throughout the day. You don't stop, get on your knees and all that, but in your heart and in your spirit, Lord, uh, help brother so-and-so, help sister and so-and-so. Lord, help our preacher. God, watch over my children. Watch over my wife. And you pray, Lord, you know my heart. You know my need today. You know my circumstance. And so prayer produces fellowship with him. The more you pray, the closer your fellowship will be with him. And so it's reaching up, oh my. And as we reach up, he looks down, he reaches down. So prayer is the key to the victory in your life. Prayer is the key to your fellowship with God. So that's the second uh, R, reaching. Then he says, number three, he said, you seek my face. The third R here is, I use the word return. Or the word reunion, seek my face. Seek my face. Uh, when Miss Baker and I first got married, we got married on a, fri uh, on a, on a, on a, on a Friday, right? We got off married on Friday. And we left that after the wedding and made our way on our, on our two-day honeymoon because that Monday morning I had to fly out of Charlotte, North Carolina 
to Lackland Air Force Base in, in Texas. So I only had that weekend together. And that time apart, I didn't get to see her. She didn't get to see me. Now, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I missed my, my family. I missed my, the folks I went to school with. I had middle and graduate. So I missed the, the folks that I knew. But the number one person I missed was her. As a matter of fact, as often as I could, I would write her, let her know that I missed her. And I couldn't wait to return to her. And, and so when I got back, uh, she met me at the airport with other people. But I got news for you. It was good to see the others, but it was good to see her what? Say it, face. It's good to be back with her and see her face. So it's a return. In other words, if they'll seek my face, the picture is this. Here's Israel. They had turned their back from God. That's why he sent the pestilence. That's why they were, they were receiving. He said, if you, if you won't worship me, if you worship other gods and turn, turn away from me, what I was going to do to them, I'll do to you. Is that not what we're getting today? Seek my face. It's a closest to God. In other words, you really, the reality of seeing him by face. And I don't, I don't want you to picture a, a physical face. You cannot do that. Now, here's why you cannot do that. We do not know what he looked like. We do know that he was a Jew. And if he, since he was a Jew, he looked like a normal Jewish man. Jesus was not. I don't picture Jesus with long flowing hair like a hippie. I don't look at him with a, the complexion that you, you see depicted today in, uh, and, in artist uh, uh, drawings. I don't picture him that whatsoever. But to see his face, oh my goodness. It's, in other words, it's a closeness to him. It's a closeness that, that you see him in such a way, you see him by faith. In other words, one of these days, our faith shall be sight. But while we're here, we need to seek his face. And the whole thing is this, that we get close to him. That we'd be near to him. You see, God has never moved. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He has not moved. <clears throat> I thought, uh, uh, think about the bride and the groom. I just told you that. It's like a bride and groom being separated for a period of time. And they come back together. They want that closeness. I want that. Do you want to be close to your family? It's like a parent to a child. You have your children. Boy, when you send them off to school, you're glad to see them come home. Oh, I have laughed this week about some of the things that these parents are going through with their kids' home. It is hilarious. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. But a closeness. He said, so he said, in other words, a return to me. Think about this. You remember the story of the prodigal and that, and that story about the lost coin, the lost sheep, and the lost son? Remember that? And the third part of that parable was about the son, the prodigal, who, uh, who uh, took his inheritance and went and wasted it on riotous living. Famine came. He was in need of, of everything he had. In other words, he lost everything. And now here he was just eating the same slop that hogs ate. And he came to himself and went back home. Now think about this now. While that boy was gone, the father was where? Back home. You think the father forgot about the boy? No. You think the father didn't care about the boy? No. Matter of fact, when you pick up the story and the boy gets home, the father saw him first. Why? He was looking for him. Amen. And the Bible said the father, when he saw the boy return and heard what he had to say, father, he said, I've sinned against heaven and against thee. And that's all, that's all he cared about. And the father ran to him. Watch this now. And the father fell upon him, kissed him, hugged him, loved him just like he was. You see, that's the way God operates. 
If we, if we as, a, as a people of God, if we'd seek his face, guess what? He would welcome us into his arms and he said, tell you what, he said, this my son, this my son that was lost is found. Rejoice, kill the fatted calf. He's home. He waited for the boy to come home. You see, God has never moved. He's waiting for us to return to him. He's waiting for the average church to return to him, average church member. He has never moved. I know you've heard the story of the couple old, old, been married many, many years, and they were on their 50th anniversary, and they were riding down the road in a convertible, and he was driving, and she was sitting over there, and, and then they pulled up beside a car, they had on the car, just married. And they looked over, and, and there was the, the bride sitting right beside the husband. Just married, right beside him. She wasn't way over there, wasn't in the back seat. She was right beside him. And the wife of the husband who had been married 50 years looked over his, and said to him, you remember when we used to be like that? And he said, yeah, but I hadn't moved. I know bucket seats makes it possible to wipe that out. Oh, well. The fourth R. And this is the one, you see, when you humble yourself, that puts you close to him, amen? When you pray, that puts you close to him, amen? When you seek his face, that even puts you closer. Now watch this, the closer you get to him, the nearer you get to him, this is what, this is what happens, he said, and turn from their wicked ways. And my fourth R is the word repentance. You see, when you get close to God, when your, when your prayer life means something to you, when your closest to him means something to you, and you do that, you begin to see yourself for what you really are. A sinner that has been saved. Amen? But a sinner that needs help every day. You need to repent every day of your life. Now, I won't go into a lot of detail because it would take a, it would take a couple more sermons to go into detail about this repentance. A, the word repentance means a return to. A repentance means, in other words, uh, turn from their wicked ways. He didn't just say bad ways or sinful ways. He said, wicked ways. Our nation is a wicked nation. Our nation is a wicked nation. What makes it that way? The people who live here. Brother Baker, I'm not a wicked person. I didn't say you were. I said our nation is. Would you not agree with me that it is, it is absolutely ungodly to kill the unborn. Okay. Would you not agree with me that the lesbianism and homosexuality and the, uh, 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 the sexual movement uh, that's been going on the last, would you not agree with me that the last 50 years we've seen the sexual movement get worse and worse? Would you not agree with me? Now, here's the thing about that. Our nation has embraced that. Our nation has basically said, let's just kill them babies. You can have as many sexual partners as you want, with whom you want, and now it's embraced. Now, here's my next point. Not only is our nation a wicked nation, but the churches have allowed wickedness to come into their places. What do you mean, Brother Baker? Our churches are wicked. 1 Peter 4.17 says, and For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Our, our churches today, think about this, our churches have become wicked places. I mean, today... It's no telling what you'll find when you go to some churches today. There's just no telling. 
Now I haven't, I've only been to one what you might say, uh, uh, not charismatic, contemporary. It was years ago. I went to a church down in Charleston, a big church. Uh, it was Assembly of God Church and uh, on, off of Rivers Avenue. They were having a youth meeting. One of the pastors there said, Brother Baker, you got to come and witness this. I said, okay. So I went with this pastor. We got there, and there was a youth meeting, and the place was full of teenagers and college students and all that. There were a few adults there. And so when we got there, the lights were on. And we just sort of sat in the back, and, uh, and the pulpit was gone. They had, they had turned the platform into a, into a stage, had two sets of drums, I mean, it was just unbelievable there. And then the so-called youth director came out, the youth pastor came out, and uh, he, had, he was dressed in solid black, had his shirt unbuttoned down to here. And, uh, <coughs> and so uh, he, he welcomed everybody who was there. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. Enjoy yourself. And so they cut the lights down low. Then they turned on the strobe lights, and the, and the band cranked up the music. And I'm telling you, it got wild. Wild. Now, in my lost days, I'd been to some dances. I'd been to some concerts. And this church service for young people would, 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 uh, was not, I mean, what I went to as a lost person did not compare to what this service was. It was so evil. It was so evil. There were girls that were no longer in the pew. They were on the shoulders of the boys. And they were all supposedly praising God. I told my preacher friend, I said, I can't handle this. I got to get out of here. De de demonic forces were so evil in that church, I couldn't stay. What are you trying to say, Brother Baker? That today is common in many churches on Sunday morning. You can go to a church and you have the spirit of the world's atmosphere. I'm not opposed to the musical instruments today they use, but I'm telling you, the ramping and the raving of it up today is not of the Lord. It is not of God. Churches, and now I'm telling you, I watched the a, a group not long ago, just for a few moments, I could not believe this. The, 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 the guys had Bermuda shorts on and flip-flops. And the girls had those skin-tight, stretchy pants on and had the halter tops up to here. And they were singing songs that I could not understand any words of it. And the place was packed out. What are you saying, Brother Baker? We need to turn from our wicked ways. We need to turn from our wicked ways. And uh, you think about it, the pleasures of sin. Watch this now. The pleasures of sin have run full throttle, full throttle, wide open, hold nothing back. Let's, let's come to church. I don't want to hurt anybody. I, I have never preached a message that I thought, I hope this hurts somebody's feelings. I've never preached a message and thought, boy, maybe this will run somebody off. Never have done that in my life. Well, I better take that back. I did in the first church, I did aim a sermon at one time at one member. And boy, God wiped me clean for that. But never done it again. But the point I'm trying to say is, there are preachers today who are afraid to call sin what it is. And to say, this is not, this is sin, this is wicked. We, cannot, we don't need this in our life. We don't need this in our home. We don't need it in our churches. We must turn. It's called re return. Repent, repent, repent. But think about it now. The pleasures of sin have run full throttle. But now, listen, but now look what is happening. Sin is having to stay home now. <laughs> In other words, this virus has sort of put a damper on some lifestyles. Amen? Amen. 
and you can agree with me, don't agree with me, I, I, you know, it doesn't matter to me. But I'm, hey, I don't care if they ever play another NBA basketball game. I don't care if, they, if I ever see another NFL game. Now, you know me, I love sports. I like it, amen. But I'm telling you, our nation has turned from God. And, hey, and you be, today you hear people saying, oh my, I miss watching uh, LeBaron James play basketball. I wouldn't, uh, uh, you think he cares about you? Here's a guy that embraces homosexuality and all that. You think he's, he, I, would have, I wouldn't have his picture in my house. They're all excited in Florida because Tom Brady is now going to be go to Florida. He's a great quarterback, and he's a multi-millionaire, but he's not one of my heroes. You see, sin is now having to take a little back seat, and uh, but you know what? Listen now, you know what's going to happen if and when this thing gets passed and gets through. If and when. You know what's going to happen? The world will go right back to what it's always done, just like Israel did. So think about it. Pastors today no longer feel the, the urge or the need or the compulsion to say, thus saith the Lord. Yes, let's preach the love of God and the grace and mercy of God. Yes, let's try our best to see people get saved. But I'm telling you, after you get saved, there's a life to live. There's a God to serve and there's things to be done and God will bless a church who will say, hey, we want to do what the Lord says do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Real preaching is missing today. Real preaching. Preaching that says, thus saith the Lord. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet, the Bible says. Our nation and the world is in SOS mode. Save our ship. And then later it was changed to save our souls. If your soul's going to be saved, the only one who can save it is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if our nation, if our nation is going to be spared, if our nation is going to be returned to what it used to be, it'll be God doing it. No one else. So this morning, our nation's in trouble. The answer's in the house of God. Churches like this and churches like this that are bigger. I'm thankful that there are churches with five and six and hundred or a thousand members who are just like Welch Creek, just got more people. Amen? And yet there are little country churches just like us. I'm glad there is still a remnant all over this country that's praying and believing God and trusting God to see us through this. Now you as an individual need these, need these four R's and uh, if you'll apply them to your life, you'll be, you'll be the better for it. You'll be rewarded for it. The joy of the Lord will return to you. The power of God will return to you and you'll see your life transformed and getting close to him once again. So here's what I want you to do this morning. Examine yourself. Huh? When's the last time you humbled yourself? Really seen yourself for what you really are? When's the last time you really had a good, your prayer life was something? You're reaching up to heaven. Huh? When's the last time you really want to get close to God? Drawn out of, drawn out of God and what? He'll draw an out of you. How close are you to God this morning? And then every day, you need a spiritual bath. Every day and throughout, you need a spiritual bath. You need to say, God, show me in my life. And he'll show you where I've let you down and disobeyed you. I don't want anything in my life displeasing to you. You see, sometimes we think sin is what we do, and that's true. But sometimes our sin is what we don't do. Our disobedience to God can both go both ways. God says, do this, and you don't do it. I will say this, the more you obey God, the more, the, the, the less you'll disobey him. So the more you obey, the less you'll disobey. So consecration produces separation. Separation does not produce consecration. You'll consecrate yourself, guess what? Separation will come.
because you're drawing close to God. You'll see your reliance upon him. So this morning, if God is speaking to your heart about something, won't you come and spend some time, just a little bit of time in prayer, maybe to pray for our nation, pray for the churches, pray for those that you know who may are sick even right now, and just whatever's on your heart. And if you're not saved, this is the perfect time to get saved right now. Amen. Miss Baker's going to come to the piano. She's going to play something. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I have delivered what you gave to me. And I thank you, Lord, for the ability to preach once again. And I pray, dear Lord, those that are sitting here in these pews and those that are listening out there somewhere, uh, Lord, uh, in their homes, and God, that you've, spoke, you've spoken to them. Please, Holy Spirit, help us examine ourselves this morning. Lord, speak to me, and I pray you have. To every lady here, every man, every little boy and girl, please, God, help us to humble ourselves, to pray and seek your face, and to turn from our wicked ways. Then we know that you'll do what you said you'll do. You'll heal our land and restore us. Please, God, we ask that individually. We ask that for our church. We ask that for our nation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.